For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and for fear of him, the guards were struck with terror and became as dead men. St. Epiphanius, the late 4th century bishop of Cyprus, preaching a sermon on Holy Saturday, said these profound words, What is this? Today there is great silence upon the earth. Great silence and stillness. Verily, great silence. For the king sleeps. The earth was frightened and became still. For God fell asleep in the flesh and raised up those who from ages past were sleeping. God died in the flesh and Hades shuddered. God slumbered briefly and those in Hades he awoke. Where now? That so recent tumult, those cries, that clamor against Christ, O ye lawless ones. Where are the populace, the oppositions, the ranks, the weapons, the spears? Where are the kings, the priests, the judicable judges? Where are the lanterns, the swords, the boisterous shouts? Where are the rabble, the jeering, the irreverent guard? They have stumbled against the cornerstone, Christ, and they were broken. They have hurled themselves against the solid rock, and they were crushed, and their waves dispersed into foam. They struck against the invincible anvil, and they were shattered. Upon the wood of the cross, they raised up the rock of life, and it brought them down and slew them, crushed them. Hmm, thank you, St. Epiphanius. Now, why the silence of hell's noisy efforts? Why did the centurion suddenly convert? Why the good thief's conversion on the cross? If you read St. Matthew's Gospel, he started out with the other thief, blaspheming our Lord, reviling him. That's what it says in St. Matthew. Both thieves were at him. Then he converted. Why were the once fearful Joseph and Nicodemus now boldly asking for the body of the Lord? Why these stunned guards who are used to putting terror into people lying on the ground filled with terror themselves? Why these shamed people striking their breasts as they went away from Calvary? simply because the heavenly court has been opened up by the king's passion, death, and resurrection. The collect for Easter Sunday Mass puts it like this, O God, who on this day, through thine only begotten Son, has thrown open to us the gate of everlasting life. Heaven is open, and the ability to silence the devil is possible. Even as the passion progressed, the devil's grip on the world faded. Now with our Lord's resurrection, rulings, rulings are being made. The wide permissions granted to the devil heretofore are able to be revoked, reversed, dismissed. In our times, seemingly more than ever before, There is no lack of noisy doings of the devil in this world. In our places of work, in our homes, in our beloved Catholic Church, in our own souls. Don't we want the silence of that first Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday to return and descend upon us and work its wonders in the world? We have the means to do it. We have what it takes. We have our baptismal character, which is priestly by nature. And with our ordained priests, we have access to the heavenly court. And we have what it takes to plead our case with the heavenly judge, God the Father. We have that special something that the Father dearly loves and values most. It cancels out all crimes satisfies justice. We have the passion, the death, 
and the resurrection of our Lord and King. We have His body, His blood, His soul, His divinity at our disposal. But it must be used well, lest the devil use any abuse against us. In the the 19th century, Blessed Francis Palau, a mystic of the Carmelite order, makes the profound observation that we can more effectively fight the noisy doings of the devil both inside and outside the church by satisfying God's justice in his heavenly courtroom in order to remove the permissions of the devil. That's more effective than fighting the individual causes and instruments of the noise itself. So-and-so is causing a problem. We could go after them directly, or we could go straight to the courtroom and start working on the devil that's harassing that person and aiding him in his making noise. Now, in this way, we go to the root of the problem rather than fighting its manifestations which we need to do according to our state in life. But we all can come to the courtroom of God and make our case. We know that the devil cannot do anything without permission. In the book of Job, we read how two separate permissions from God were required of him to attack Job. First his livelihood and then his very own person. Judas had to receive direct permission from the king to betray him. In St. John's Gospel, we read, And after the morsel, Satan entered into Judas. And Jesus said to him, That which thou dost, do quickly. In other words, you have my permission, but you must do it quickly. Notice that word, quickly. The Jewish elders did not plan on killing His Majesty so near the Passover. They knew that would be a problem. But the terms of God's permissions must be abided by. Note that some today, sad to say, some today we've lost our love for tradition. We shouldn't be surprised at whatever we find today, believe me. That some today, some today disbelieve what all He did and suffered could take place on Thursday evening and culminate on Friday afternoon. There was just too much stuff. It just couldn't be done. So they move Holy Thursday to Tuesday. The Last Supper was really on Tuesday. Did you know that? The Last Supper was really on Tuesday. Because they cannot imagine that all that stuff happened in that short a time. Now, it seems to me these folks need to think on the permissions of our Lord, He said, that which you are going to do, you do quickly. And they did. They were driven. They couldn't stop. If you read the mystics, they speak about how the devil saw where things are going and he started to realize what was going on and he tried to slow him down and he couldn't. In any case, since all the works of the devil depend on the permissive will of God, then we can approach God directly and in His heavenly court that has been thrown open by the Lord's resurrection, we can plead with God, God the Father, to reverse the devil's permissions. To prove this, Palau has written a book called The Struggle of the Soul with God. I recommend it. It's free on the internet. In this work, he describes some amazing courtroom scenes where the devil, who is a most expert lawyer, very experienced. He's had thousands of years of experience in the courtroom of God. Blessed Mary of Jesus crucified said, the devil is like the wind. He can get through the smallest cracks. And he gains many permissions to attack us based on our countless sins, offenses, and negligences. Yet the faithful souls using their priestly powers can counter his efforts by making their own case. Now, there are many examples of this in the history of the church. In the prefigurements, we have Moses holding the wood of the cross in his staff early in the morning. We heard it in the the lesson this night. He's holding his hands in the shape of a cross in the early morning. And he reversed 
the permissions of the devil that were driving the Egyptians to attack God's people. What was the result? The walls of the Red Sea gave way and engulfed them in silence. Beautiful silence ensued. Once when some noisy, blaspheming convicts pass by the window of St. Catherine of Siena, maybe you know this story, they're on their way to be executed. Seeing a host of demons swirling around them, she immediately entered into the heavenly courtroom and she pleaded their case. It was not long before these convicts converted, seeing a vision of His Majesty and His passion. They saw Him and they converted instantly. They made a full confession and begged the torturers to increase their labors so that they could expiate their sins. The torturers were so shocked they stopped altogether. The demons were silenced. They died in peace, lovers of God and happy to go to heaven. The blasphemy ended silent. Once, St. Gemma Galgani met a sinful, unrepentant sinner in her own town. She went home and before her confessor, entered into the courtroom of God, pleading this poor man's case. It was a most difficult one, forcing St. Gemma to turn to the Blessed Mother for help, which proved the deciding factor. The very man came to St. Gemma shortly after she won the case and immediately confessed to her priest. In listening to the saint argue the case, the good confessor was even able to help the poor man remember some sins to make a good and integral confession. God puts these amazing examples before us to teach us what is possible for us as well if only we have faith. Maybe we will not converse so openly in the heavenly court as St. Catherine and St. Gemma. But nevertheless, it is open to us through our Lord's resurrection. The devil can be silenced. You have the ability to do this. Blessed Palau explains that it is most readily done at the holy sacrifice of the mass. Most notably after the second consecration. When Calvary and heaven are open to us. Just think about it. The heavenly court is open in heaven. What do we have at the Mass? A representation of Calvary. Two windows are open. Heaven and Calvary. We have what it takes to plead our cause in the heavenly court with Calvary. Truly, it is through the holy sacrifice of the Mass that the King of Kings conquers, reigns, and commands and defends His people from all evil. This is what St. Paul teaches us in so many ways, most especially in his letter to the Hebrews, where St. Paul explains how our Lord passed from this world into the heavenly tabernacle not made by human hands, making it possible for us to approach the throne of grace with courage and confidence, and how we are present before a heavenly court of saints and angels at the Mass. There it is. We have access through our priests offering the Holy Mass throughout the world and through our own common priesthood of the faithful, we can enter and make our case before the Lord. Say to the Father, I give you the precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son to pay for the price of so and so and all their troubles. Please, Lord, remove the permissions of the devil that is harassing this person been harassing our church, our bishop, our priests. The price for all sins, offenses, and negligences have been paid and are available. All that remains is that we need to learn how to use it in a way that is pleasing to God. And then we can begin. And then we can begin to silence the devil and frustrate his efforts. Now I will end with a typical example from how this can work from the lives of the saints. At first light on April 6th, April 1935, probably pretty close to Easter, early in the morning, imagine that, a gentleman living in a suburb of Padua 
came into the city in search of a doctor for his wife. She should have given birth two days before, but now a natural birth seemed impossible. The wife's agony was terrible, and it seemed she must die. Her husband rushed off to find help, but at the unearthly hour, he didn't know where to apply. Finding himself outside the Capuchin church, he remembered Father Leopoldo and went in to find him. Father Leopoldo, he was one of those confessors like St. Padre Pio. He could read your soul. Father Leopoldo was already in confessional. And when he had heard this story, he remained for a moment in thought. This is something he did very often. In other words, he was entering into the heavenly court, making a case. And then he said to this good man, Have you faith? Yes, Father. Good. Then go at once to the Basilica of St. Anthony and hear Mass at the tomb. Then go home and see how things are and then come back and tell me about it. Father, I'll gladly go and hear Mass later, but right now I must go and find a doctor for my wife. She's dying. I told you to go and hear Mass at once. Moved by some unknown force of grace, he obeyed. Then he rushed back home to find that his wife had given birth to a beautiful child without the slightest difficulty. The birth took place, they reckoned, just as he was leaving the basilica after hearing Mass. Imagine that. When the delighted father duly reported to St. Leopoldo, the latter smiled. Didn't I tell you to have faith In the Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.